Grace, and the theme this month is cultivating collaboration in a virtual classroom. But before we do that, GEG has some very, very special news. Our very own Becky Colling is the West Coast representative of, let me get this straight, the GEG program mentor for the entire West Coast of the United States. So we, we are very, very proud and just, there's just, she's a perfect fit and the GEG program is in really good hands with her and, and the rest of um, her team with our incredible men, our incredible um, program owner, May, um, who's a saint as far as we're all concerned, but we're really proud of Becky and, and just this, where she goes in the future is anybody's, uh, uh, anybody's guess and speculation. Congratulations. So this uh, uh, week uh, is, yay, my turn, um, monitoring and collaborating in Google Slides. So I love teaching and training with um, Becky and Karen, and there is not a training, <laughs> there is not a training where Becky isn't sitting on my shoulder saying, no sit and get now. I don't want to sit and get, you know. Where's the hands-on? Where's the collaboration? What are the teachers doing? You know, so um, I love that that's the theme for this month because people don't understand it's not about the ed tech. It's about uh, it's the purpose of your lesson, and it's the ed tech makes things so much easier. Or if they don't make it easier, it makes it more relevant. It extends it. Um, so it, the, the 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 big point of G Suite ever since it started was collaboration and how can we make something better? How can we make something bigger? So this uh, month we're doing it with, with Google Slides. Doink. And if you guys have been with us for the past three weeks on our events page, um, I'm posting the YouTube videos once Becky puts them up on you. We're a really good team. Once Becky puts it up on YouTube, then I'll put a link to it. I'll put the display it on our events page. And I'll also put a link to the slides there so you can see um, you can watch this recording later and you can get our resources. So first of all, if you guys don't mind, uh, jump on our Jamboard. Um, if you guys, I feel very proud. I don't know how many of you have noticed this, but Jamboard just got upgraded with a text box. Can you see my beautiful text box? It, it's like when we've been using Jamboard, it, we've really been wondering, oh, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. And on a real Jamboard, you can do more. And on the app on a um, Android tablet, you can do more. But in the web um, version of it, it was a little more limited. And so now you have a text box, which is very cool. So in addition to your sticky notes and in addition to your pen, you um, can add a text box. And then um, Becky and Karen, is this little round circle something new too? I think it is. I thought it was. So I just. Can I jump in really quickly? Yes, please. Yes, please. We don't, not everyone's going to have this update yet. It's okay, a slow rollout, you. just like everything else. So if you're like <laughs> me, you don't have any of this yet. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we got it. And I don't know if maybe, I know I wasn't logged in with my uh, district account. So I must have been just rolled out early. But anyways, um, please share out on our Jamboard and um, uh, tell us how we can collaborate. We'll only do that, I don't wanna keep you guys up, I don't know about you, but today was the first day of school, so I wanna really respect your time, and, and to me, these, these meetings are, are really, really meaningful to me. I love, the, I love meeting with people, I love socializing, but I'm gonna to stick to the time limit so we can go to bed a reasonable hour. Um, so how and why collaborate with Google Sites? So just put a couple of your ideas on there, and um, let's say, how about four minutes at the most? <laughs> what what just happened? This is really weird. So I just I, I was showing off my amazing Jamboard editions with like the, the 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 shape thing and the text box thing to Shannon. And now I just clicked on it and they're not there. I guess like from from my like personal account, it's like and then you know, from my school somebody, account. Could my somebody school account, account, I can, Exactly. Using email. I mean, it shouldn't have disappeared. Hey, so I'm going to share my tab because I've realized those are shapes. I remember hearing about the shapes. And um, I'm going to quit Zoom. Um, so I am going to stop sharing my screen for a second so I can share another tab. <laughs> As Becky reminds us, it's like, don't forget you're not sharing that tab anymore. Okay. Chrome tab and Jamboard. 
So let me be the first to show you that that shapes. So math teachers, um, language arts teachers, anybody who needs to do um, um, outlining and um, uh, uh, algorithms and things like that, there's your shapes. So very cool. So play with that. And the text box, how wonderful. So just keep Yes. Are you logged into your Learns account mm -hmm. or your own personal account? Oh, I'm logged into my personal account right now. Okay. Do you not see it in your personal account? I mean, your I Learns account? I don't see it in my Learns. Interesting. So I can see it on my Jamboard, but you don't see it on your Jamboard. And even though we're on the same Jamboard, that's really that's really interesting. Yeah, um, I don't have it either. Yeah. I don't have it in either of my accounts. And it's not I don't either. have it in my Gmail account either. Hmm. Interesting. I, I, I don't know. I get rolled out stuff a little sooner than a lot of people sometimes. Oh, cute, the bitmoji. So cute. Yeah, I think I oh. got those features like a week ago. Um, and so I was showing them off to, to Shannon. <laughs> and she was sad because she didn't have them on hers. But now, yeah, I don't know why, but from my from this account, I just it's just gone back to the sadness. I got really excited about the shapes because usually like you have to use your phone app and stuff to be able to do like that auto the, what is that called? The the, the um, assistive assistive draw. But like now, like with that button, you can you can just draw shapes now, which is really exciting. That's so cool. That's just really neat. Because it, it's not it's not helpful um, to teachers if you can't do things like that's pretty basic. Because you don't want to expect somebody to have to draw. Um, I mean, I don't know about you, but my circles aren't very <laughs> well drawn. So having a shape um, creator is wonderful. And I have to, I need to try it on my, I need to install the app on my, um, one of my tablets because then I'll really see it. So, and then I put a little thing from um, Alice uh, Wheeler about student guide to collaborative Google Slides. So um, the, since we're you know talking about this right now, Google Slides can be used to develop interactive discussions, jigsaw sections, all about me slides, sharing observations, photos, named tents, Go, oh, we're doing name tense in my, uh, today was my first day with my kiddos and name tense and some kids just want to do something like thin slides, just one little sentence and, and that's okay. That's what they're doing. Other kids have every video they've researched, um, uh, pictures. Um, they, I've, I've let the kids do a couple of now because it's not made out of paper. They can um, have as many slides as they want to talk about themselves. Oh, I like the noted one. That's cute. Um, and then make them interactive. Let's see. You guys can still see this because I'm on a tab, right? So there's a there's a why and a how. So we can if I think we're all good on that side. I think I'll delete this one. I love how you if you if you want to delete a slide, you just go to that one and then delete it. There, so we got a how and a why. And it's kind of nice because rather than, um, you know, when we're talking at people, they're not really getting a lot. And so like, you know, Becky's big thing, it's not a sit and get, what are we sharing out? And and then again, like just learning about when you're presenting that if you're, even though you're in presenting mode, you can actually make it smaller. That was a wonderful tip. That's so funny. Can you, but you guys can see the circles I draw, you just can't draw them yourselves yet. Right. Cool. So I imagine I can. Very jealous now. <laughs> I <know. laughs> and I'm like, I'm the most, I feel so, I feel guilty now. <laughs> Why should we use them? How should we? Oh, there's a lot of slides in there now. I know what happened there. I think Jamboard is just the coolest whiteboard ever. I'm so glad that it's been rolled out. Good. So with obviously with Google Slides, um, it's a lot of times it's what uh, everybody's uh, Swiss Army knife of tools. It's their favorite Google tool. 
because uh, there's very little that uh, you can't do with slides now. Now you're, you're, I remember when you couldn't embed a video and I can't even remember now how long it's been that we can. So it, they do um, as much as you need them to do. And then of course, when you publish it, then you can embed um, the Google Slides in a um, website and it'll display and run. And the other thing is, um, I'm looking at the numbers that are popping up over there. Um, the other thing is, uh, I think it was at one of our global GEG presentations where they showed us how to get rid of the navigation bar at the bottom. So if you're displaying a slide and they don't need the navigation, um, you can make that bar disappear. So it looks really slick. So did, oh, Becky, did you figure out how many teachers can get in a Google Classroom now? Did it, is it limited or would, did that number go up? Oh, that's def the question in the chat was around how many can join a uh, Jamboard yeah, and right Jamboard right now is, is 20. I yeah, wonder if that's going to change though with the new uh, Jamboard interaction with Meets. Yeah, that's great. Well, thanks for putting so much stuff on there, you guys. This is so fun. Okay, so what I will do now is I will move on because it's about 7.13, 7.14. And I need to stop presenting, go back to the other tab now. So Shannon, what I've had to do because of that 20 number on Jamboards is just create groups that go to certain ones. Five, six kids on a Jamboard and then share out at the end and take like and create another one together it's kind of it is a bummer um it's interesting because today we were talking about um you know why google enterprise and why that's a g suite enterprise is is something that we're pushing our districts to do because of all the functionality and stuff and especially because meets are just becoming better and better and better um, one of the best arguments, and I thought, oh, let's, let's use that argument, is that when you have Google Meets and your students are in breakout rooms, you can open up the multiple Meets and you're present in all of them. Whereas when you're in a, in a, in a Zoom breakout room, you've got to physically go in there um, or virtually go in there and then you've left the other places. So it's, I thought, well, that's a really good argument for using Google Meets as well. So just some different ideas. Um, so what, uh, how and why monitor with Google Slides? Um, there's this tweet just came out and when it came out, I was like, oh, well, that's really just in time for Monday. So um, Ed Campos is, is, if you're not following him on Twitter, please do. Um, he is with um, Computer Using Educators. He's one of their um, you know, uh, main curriculum um, people and he's just an incredible um, presenter and always full of energy and happiness and, and joy of sharing stuff. And so, he was talking about um, dropping the Google slide link in Zoom and making it be a slide shorter, sorter, excuse me, um, because you can see what the students are doing. And so when you give every group a slide and then you put it in slide sorter so that you can see that, um, then um, you can see if your kiddos are actually working on those slides. So it's kind of a, um, a creative way, I don't wanna say sneaky, a creative way for a teacher to see who's on task and um, who's not. Does anybody need me to show the slide sorter um, function of the Google Slides? You guys good good with that? Does anybody? I'll assume that if you don't say you need to see it, then um, if, you're, if you're just shy, then um, at the bottom, it's one of the displays. And so instead of showing it just as a single slide, you could see all your slides. And Francesca so- is saying she would like to see it. Oh, very good, thank you. I, can't, I actually couldn't see that. So let me get out of sharing. Actually, I just have to do this, okay. So I'm gonna exit here. And then if you look down here, you have different ways to see your slides. And so this allows you to see all of them. So I can see if Becky's working on her slide and Karen's on her side um, and Shannon's on her side, but uh-oh, Mel, I wanna get back on task there, Mel. <laughs> so it's just a, a very cool way, uh, a teacher trick to do that. Back. Present. And the trick that um, um, wonderful Jennifer showed me uh, was that here I'm in present mode, but rather than it take over my entire screen, because if you're not in present mode and you're in a Google Meet and recording like this, um, you don't get a very good view. Oh, good, Andrea, just in time, you get to do our screen uh, uh, 
recording to screen. That's that's my buddy from Santa Ana Unified, and um, she's in uh, Orange County Q as well. We we both just left a meeting there. So um, I don't know if you've seen this trick, Andrea, but if you are presenting and you don't want it to take over your entire screen, you can choose this button here, and then um, that'll change the size for you. So that's a tech tip today. So um, and. Uh, um, so we've got the tech tip from Ed Campos to see the slides. And there we go. Okay, so there's a couple different ways um, to record the slides. There's, it's always changing, and then I imagine someday it'll be part of Google Slides because every time something cool comes out, it wait a year and it'll be part of the um, program. But um, Screencastify has a Chrome extension and makes recording slides um, presentations um, really seamless and easy to do. Definitely install Screencastify, but um, in the interest of time, we're not going to share both because I know Becky really loves this Chrome extension um, written by the amazing Clay Codes. He's a Google innovator. He's in our global GEG, and he's just brilliant and always sharing this stuff for free. Um, and then um, Andrea was using it, and in the interest of we want this to be your community, we want this to be um, this is your, you know, GEG SoCal. So um, if you ever want to present with us um, at a monthly meeting or at one of our mini series, um, definitely uh, just give us a shout out. So Andrea is going to share her screen and show us how to use Clay Code's um, uh, Chrome extension, Record to Sides. But these two resources here, I've, I've got the resources. This is an incredible blog entry about how to record the slides down here. And then there's um, two links. These are each links to the actual Chrome extensions and then two different YouTube videos. So you have uh, five different um, uh, resources to help you record to slides. But are you are you ready, Andrea? Then you don't sure. have to. Oh, good, good. Oh, good. I didn't have my camera. Yes, I am here. And yes, and somebody asked about, I will put the link. I What we're doing with the uh, link to the slides now is we're just putting it on the events page of our website. And before we do, Andrea, let me um, stop presenting. And then I'm going to show really quickly, um, share the screen again. Uh, I'm just going to do a window this time. And I want to show you that on our website, um, we have an events tab. And that's where we put our old, our, our events we've done in the past. So you can see if you've missed any of the other um, August mini series, there's a link to the YouTube and the slides. And I'll, I'll put that up this evening. Um, it's a team effort. Becky will get it up on YouTube and then I'll put the links here. And then every month that we have a monthly meeting, I'll put those there as well. So without further ado, I'm going to hand the reins over to Andrea. Andrea, I believe you can just click present and right. um, show us how to. Use Clay Code to record the slides. All right. So as Stacy said, my name is Andrea Earl, and I'm a math teacher in Santa Ana. And for this year, I get to be um, a distance learning coach because we ended up with an extra math teacher at my site. So things just kind of worked out. Um, I am a Canvas trainer, and I love the integration with uh, Google tools. And they just came out, Canvas just, uh, and and Google just came out with a new integration just last week, which I'm still playing with. But oh, this yeah, record slides is so easy and so seamless. So hopefully you can see my screen. Maybe I'll. Oh, Andrea, the big tip of the evening is go to present in your slides because this was okay. the presenting was new, not new to me. But down at the right. bottom, you'll see the little yeah next to the uh, little uh, settings wheel. Oh, there you go. Oh, but I can't use the I can't use the extension now. Yeah, you can't oh, use right. the extension oh, if you're so presenting. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Um, honestly, I stole this um, template from actually not stole because she gives it away. Slides Mania, and my girlfriend Kristen uh, Morales, who is my very dear friend. I've never met her in person, but you know, she uh, put together this notebook which I adapted, but. We want to give the kids a lot of oral um, instructions, right? Because the kids are more likely to listen to our instructions than they are to read them. So by using this uh, record the yeah. slides, it's just a little blue camera with a plus sign. This is how easy it is. Yeah. Whoops, I didn't mean to click it twice. Let's try that again. <laughs> nope. What did I do? Click. Oh, maybe we should hit the record button. Might that help? <laughs> 
Hi, this is Andrea, and this is your digital notebook. So every day at the end of class, I want you to take a screenshot or write a reflection on what you've learned today, and we'll share it on the next class period. And you hit stop. I mean, that's how easy it is. You honestly, though, you have to get out over that you don't look perfect, that your hair is not done, that there's trash in the background. You just don't, but the kids don't care. Oh, God, look at that freeze screen but you know what the kids don't care as long as you yeah. say what you want to say you hit okay you just wait a few minutes it is a little bit slow and it's going to pop right there up on my slide that's so cool that i can move wonderful. it so oh i don't want it there i want it over here i can make it a little bigger you know do whatever you want i guess i can move that out of the way and ta-da oh it takes a minute to format so we'll just wait a moment yeah. Sing the TikToks, you know. Sing the birthday song. But seriously, it's that easy. And um, that was so awesome, Andrea. Thank you very much. That was easy enough. Can so, I can I share really quickly? Definitely. That if you are going to be sharing this with your students, you need to go and change your shared settings in your drive for that folder. If you don't. Your students won't be able to see any of your videos. Oh, good. Uh, oh, the share settings for the videos. For the videos, they will create its mm -hmm. own folder in your drive called record to slides videos, and you need to change the share settings. Otherwise, every time a student tries to watch a video, it will say you do not have access. That's great. Andrea, do you want to show um, your drive and show how you could do that? I can do that. Where's my drive? Yeah, <laughs> Actually, Becky, this is Andrea's first year as an instructional coach in our district. I mean, she's well, always first, been a mentor. She's been a mentor. Year. Yeah. Well, so the first cool. year since 2009 yeah. or something. Yeah. All right. So, uh, recordings. That. There's my record to slides folder. Click on the people. You can change the links or the permissions, I mean. So right now it's any, oh, it's right. It says anyone on the internet with the link can view. Did you have trouble with that? In personal or in school drives, most school drives won't be set as anyone on the internet can view. Are you in your personal account or school? Oh, I am on my personal right now. Yeah, oh. that's why. Okay. So like, we've been in school for four days and this has been my <laughs> oh, 500,000 no. emails about this. Um, so just so you all know, your school drive will not be set up that way. Good tip, good tip. You know what? I think I always record in my personal. And in fact, I've stopped using my school YouTube for uploading videos. I do everything to my personal because the school yeah. just, it's weird sometimes. Yeah, that, that makes so. it easier. And it, and it's like, it's it's just content, educational content that you're making. So it's, it's, it's easy to share and just leave it on your private one. Becky and Andrea are the two people I have heard rave about this. So I'm really glad I was, I'm glad that you guys got so in on that part because I know how much you love that tool. Um, we have about four minutes left. I feel very good about being on time. Um, so um, on this last slide, we're talking about, I, this was one that Becky shared last time, but I just like that she's always continually reminding us that um, collaboration is key. And especially um, as, um, you know, Becky's a millennial and I'm a Gen Xer, and I feel like those two bookends there, it, it everything was about what could we get our hands on, what Thank can we do ourselves. We can't see your screen. Oh, there we go. Thank you very much. Um, but it was like, we don't want you to do it for us. We want you to let us get our hands dirty. Let us do stuff um, ourselves. And so... I just love that she's always pushing collaboration because that's that's the best word you can say about G Suite and all these wonderful tools. So um, it's it's not always going to look the same. It's going to look unique. It's going to be someone else's um, iteration and things like that. And then with this whole virtual learning, um, we just pivoted on a dime and Santa and Unified opened up today. And I was just raving with um, uh, Becky and Karen about how innovative our school um, district schedule is, how much space and time people have to try these tools, and yet it's still very rigorous, there's still a ton of accountability, but people have the ability and students have the ability to express themselves 
and um, um, use these tools in ways that we can't even imagine. So, um, if again, if you guys had a, if you guys wanted to um, look at the uh, Jamboard, if you didn't get a chance to add something on the Jamboard, I'll leave it open for about an hour, and then I'll um, lock down the slides and then stick them up on. Um, our website and uh, Karen dropped the link to our website in the chat. And don't forget that awesome tip for monitoring your kiddos from um, Ed Campos. Oh, I know. There was one more tip. I'll put it in the slides, but I forgot to show it. Um, you can, oh, this one is actually a PowerPoint tip. I will tell you that one uh, at, a, at a future event. That one's not, that's why I didn't put that one in. That was a PowerPoint, not a, a Zoom trick, not a, a Google Slides trip. But. Um, thank you guys for coming. Does anybody have any questions? Next month, so, next week, we're doing I, different I do. focus. <laughs> I, can I throw in a tip or ask for people in the chat to share? Seeing like the record to slides feature, how would you use that in a collaborative way with your students? Because I, I can see, you know, in slides, I can record to slides, I can create a video, but if I'm just creating it and having my students watch it again, that's not very collaborative. And so, uh, and just having them respond to something. But if your student has the extension, my thought is I could ask a question and my students could respond using that record to slides feature. I also see like feedback. Mel, I love that. Use it like Flipgrid. Some districts don't have access to Flipgrid, but if you have access to this, students could create their video and then next to it, another student could respond to their video. Um, similar to how you could do that in Flipgrid. I love that idea. Any other thoughts on how you could use it collaboratively with your students? And you guys, do me a favor. I'm going to make a page on the Jamboard. Um, again, that's that's Becky's redirecting back to, it's not a sit and get. What? How are you sharing this out? So on this next slide in Jamboard, please share how you're going to use that because um, when we come back and look at this later, that's so relevant. So. I think also a good way to use it is like, um, if we're trying to loop in our students that are like English language learners, and sometimes they struggle with like the, you know, typing of words or such, it gives them access that maybe they previously didn't have. And so they can kind of engage that way. I love that. And then I also saw in here having students do many lessons on topics, um, explain their thinking in math talks, and just, it really is giving voice during distance learning when they might not necessarily have it. Over the summer, I had my students, it was a digital storytelling class, and they had to interview a parent or an adult and uh, have them tell a story. And I just had them record right there on the slide. And so it was, so they were short, right? So they weren't going on and on and on, but, uh, but they were having conversations with their parents um, or significant adults, and it was pretty cool and they could just do multiple slides. And it was such a, like down and dirty, quick and easy, but then really fun to share. Yeah, I'll drop, I'll drop you back on that. To piggyback on that vein, like it could be cool too, like I'm an English teacher. Uh, we do progressive storytelling sometimes, like where somebody starts a story and then somebody else picks up. It could be just another virtual way to engage. So it's not always, you know, typing. Um, and like it could be fun to watch them or you can like get people to kind of share parts of a story um, and they can take it and like for younger kids maybe drag drop put them in order of like progression of uh like the plot map or something along those lines mm -hmm. and if you did use it for like reflection if you had kids watch a video or even just watch your slide deck and leave their reflections they can watch each other's because we all pick up things in a different way my memory of what happened might be slightly different so we can watch each other's and then get more and maybe say what i learned from becky that oh i didn't even notice that they did that there so you can collaborate that way too just more living notes sharing notes yeah, I think I got, I think I grabbed everybody's things out of the chat. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming. Does anybody have any more questions? Let me go back to our upcoming events. And each one of those is clickable. So there's a link to the upcoming events in the, she says as she's thinking here, <laughs> in the slide deck. Yay.
I love hyperlinks. That's like the best thing ever invented. So if I, if I see a slide, there better be at least two hyperlinks. That's all I got to say. So we have our next monthly meetup in September. And Karen, do you want to tell everybody our special guest or not yet? Not yet, because okay. it's not confirmed, confirmed. Almost, almost. I think Somebody. it is. Yeah, I think I'm just waiting. I sent yeah. the last email, yeah. <laughs> Next Monday, um, come back and join us for Define Your Focus. And that'll wrap up our um, August mini series on collaboration. And we're just, we're really glad you guys are here and look forward to our September mini series. We'll get that um, uh, uh, topic out to you guys soon and hope to see you at our next two events. <laughs>